actress, singer, director, polyvalent and multicultural, Maria de Medeiros was born in Lisbon, grew up in Vienna and has lived in Paris for the last 20 years. So she is in every sense a genuine citizen of Europe. Yes, it's true. I feel like I'm a citizen of Europe and I thank my parents for having educated me with this European perspective. As a child, I lived in Austria and often went home to Portugal by car for holidays. So from a very early age, I was used to traveling across Europe, going via Italy, France, Spain and Portugal. Each time we changed language and culture. My mother was always very strong in languages. So each time we crossed a frontier, we automatically changed language, which left us pretty surprised. It was a very good school. It's true I grew up with this idea that at heart I am a citizen of Europe. What does Europe mean to you? I think that Europe is a very ambitious idea, a very idealistic concept that inspires me. It's a concept that involves finding unity in extreme diversity. In a long shared history that was often built on conflict, but which unites us and gives us a rich, common artistic and linguistic culture. It's a wonderful project. De Madeiros starred in her first film at the age of 15, but it was her role as the author Anais Nin in Philip Kaufman's Henry and June in 1990 that first brought her to international attention. On the other side of the camera, she's directed several short and full-length films, including April Captains, her tribute to the heroes of the 1974 Carnation Revolution in Portugal. April Captains was the project of a lifetime. I began working on it when I was 21 years old. I realized it was an enormous privilege to have lived through the Carnation Revolution in my childhood and to have witnessed a real creation of democracy. I say real because on the television they've got us used to believing that you establish democracy through the power of bombs by killing civilian populations. In fact, it's not in that way that democracy is established. Portugal has taught the world a lesson. It has shown this example unique in the world of how you can achieve real democracy via a peaceful, humanist path. Outside the realm of cinema, de Medeiros has also pursued a musical career. Following on from A Little More Blue, she is working on a second solo album. And she has also participated in the tribute album and show in honor of the Italian composer Nino Rota. The Italian singer Mauro Giola, who worked with you on the Nino Rota project, described you as an activist somewhere between revolutionary and child. Do you recognize yourself in that description? <laughs> Yes, because I believe there's an idealism in the idea of revolution that you should never lose. It's something to do with childhood in the sense that you've always the hope of improving things and changing the world. There's an energy in the idea of revolution. 
Aliás, a, a revolução dos escravos, uma das coisas que me seduziu... What's more, what seduced me about the idea of the Carnation Revolution was that it was carried out by people who were very young. They were 29 or 30 at the time. They had already lived through very difficult and very significant experiences. But they still had that energy, that hope in the future that you have when you're young. In that sense, for me, revolution is linked to a certain idea of youth and hope. What was it like being an actress in the United States? I didn't grow up with the American dream. I wasn't even meant to become an actress. Of course, I adored Betty Davis and American cinema, but I didn't grow up idolizing cinema culture or even American rock and roll. I've always considered myself much more European. But of course, every time I've been called up to make a film in the US, I've been delighted. But it's something that's begun in Europe. All the American directors with whom I've worked have come to look for me in Europe. I've never set myself up in Hollywood. I've never tried to build a career there. I'm very much a city dweller. I like to sense the city. I like to go to the theatre, the cinema or to a concert. I like urban living. Paris is a difficult city. Of course, when there's sunshine like today, it's super, but everyday life is hard. But for artists, for all these years, Paris has always been very attractive because there's a cultural offering which I hope will be maintained and because it's a city which helps artists and cultural production at all levels to a certain extent. These grants are in danger now, but that's what brought us here to Paris. It's a city where, for many years, it has been possible to live as an artist, and I hope that's going to continue. Maria de Medeiros, thank you for this interview. You can see it in full on our website, euronews.net.